This is the Waldorf Q. A very powerful digital synthesizer released in 1999. It has a ton of hands-on control, lots of features under the hood, and remains exceptionally versatile for sound design to this day. I hope you'll join me today for a review as we take a deeper look at this classic virtual analog synthesizer. The Waldorf Q. This is a very powerful digital synthesizer released in 1999 and has a number of distinct features which sets it apart from other digital synths from that era. It's 16 voices in the standard edition as well as a more rare 32 voice version which we have here today. As well, it features 16 part multi-timbrality and a number of other great features and functions which I'll showcase to you through this review. So I hope you'll join me today as we walk through this synth in a bit more detail. I'll demonstrate some sounds a little bit later and I'll give you my final thoughts towards the end. So just a high level here, the panel is obviously very knob laden. There's 58 knobs on board, but starting on the left, there's three LFOs with multiple wave shapes. There's a oscillator section with three oscillators and FM. There's a mixer section with ring modulation and noise. There's a filter routing section for the dual filter setup. This is the filter block here where you can access those two filters independently and as well as the amplifier section and dual effects on board. There's an arpeggiator on board. There is a step sequencer up to 32 steps as well as four different envelopes you can access here. Furthermore, there's a 16 slot mod matrix you can access as well as cross patch morphing on board as well as multi timbral access for up to 16 parts or four parts directly on the interface here. So very hands on to edit and create your sounds. Okay, so let's start with the oscillator section. This is a single oscillator uh, starting with a pulse wave. Of course, you also have pulse with modulation, so manual. or via LFO. Next we have the sawtooth wave. Triangle wave. Sine wave. And on oscillators one and two, we actually have two wavetables available as well, which opens things up a bit more in terms of sound design possibilities. So this is wavetable number one. Scan through the wavetable. Okay, wavetable no number two. Let's now uh, check out some of the FM functionality here. So uh, we can assign uh, an FM source. So in this case, I'll say FM source will be oscillator three modulating oscillator one. And we'll make these sine waves to start. And I will increase the FM amount.
Okay, so let's try another wave shape for modulating the FM. So this is pulse width. Or wavetable. Very metallic sounding. So we also have oscillator sync on board. So I'll enable that. And to set that up, you have to configure it in the mod matrix for the source and the destination. In this case, I've applied mod wheel. Okay, so now let's bring in some of these other oscillators and we will stack some of these to hear what that sounds like. You can start getting some very nice chorusing. Beautiful. There is a glide rate here as well, so I can turn that on. as well as overall pitch modulation for the entire oscillator section. Uh, we can control that with an LFO. Of course, these LFOs go into audio rate. This is a sine wave. Of a triangle. Square. start getting some FM tones just from the LFOs. Really cool. As well as Sawtooth. Sample and Glide. Basically noise. Sample and hold. So that's the LFO section. There's also a delay available for each LFO and they can also be synced to clock. There's also a ring modulator on board as well. So getting the metallic sounds there. Just ring modulation. There's also noise on board. We've got white noise here. And that white noise generator also can be used for external audio in. So you can actually patch in uh, audio through the synth 
And in addition to that, there is a vocoder on board as well. So that is the oscillator section at a high level. Um, very fully featured in my opinion. You've got FM, you've got uh, noise, you've got ring mod, you've got uh, three different oscillators here with multiple wave shapes and wave tables. So very powerful for sound design. Moving on, this is the routing section for the filter. And currently it's in series uh, filter mode. So there's two different filters on here, filter one and filter two. This has just been using a single filter at this point. So I'll enable both of these. And you can route from serial into parallel or in any uh, portion in between. This is now parallel. Doesn't really sound like much, but when you start introducing some panning and things of that nature, you can really tell a difference. So this is a 24 dB filter. We have cutoff control. Resonance, which does self-oscillate. There is also a PPG type of low-pass filter here. Definitely uh, resonant. There's a 12 dB low pass. There's a 24 dB band pass. Twenty four dB high pass as well. And there is a notch filter. There is also a comb filter, positive and negative. Get that spacey type of phasing. Awesome to have a comb filter on this synth. Really opens up more sound design possibilities. Okay, so uh, those are the types of filters that are on board as well. There is obviously a filter cutoff. Of course, you can control that with. Depending on the shape. We also have something else in this filter section, which is filter FM. Sawtooth. Square. Awesome sounds there with the filter FM that's on board this synth. Really incredible. Uh, as well, there is a pan modulation control here. So there's actually two. There's one for manual panning. Like so. Or uh, there is a pan modulation. Of 
course, that is also controlled by LFOs or other modulators. So in this case, we have LFO1, audio rate. So you can get some very lovely soundscapes just with some filter cut off and a little bit of pan mod. Uh, there's also an amp modulation, so you can modulate for tremolo effects. Of course, that's controlled by things like LFOs or other parameters. As well, we have the effects section here. So there's dual effects, so effects one, uh, currently, we can set this to a chorus. And you have different controls for speed and depth, and delay for the chorus. Fairly basic. A flanger. There's a phaser on board as well. There's some nice delays on board here. Next up, there's an overdrive. There is also something here called 5FX, and this has a couple of great features. There's a down sampler in here. total decimation of the sound. We get some nice harmonics. There is a reverb. So that's the reverb. That's actually quite decent, and it goes pretty, pretty long. So if you need reverb, there's definitely a good quality reverb on the Waldorf Q. There is a tap delay here. So effects one has all of those effects. Effects two is basically identical, except it does have something at the end 
uh, there's a 5.1 delay if you have a 5.1 system because the synth actually has digital outputs on the back, spdiff out. So you can hook it up to a proper home theater system with 5.1 uh, stereo. Okay, let's take a look now at the arpeggiator section here. So there's a couple of modes. You've got just on. Right, if I let go, it stops playing. You've got one shot. cycle through and then it's done or you've got hold uh, there is a length control here which is basically a gate Tempo control up to 300 BPM, all the way down to 40 BPM. And the arpeggiator, uh, if we can edit it here, there's actually a lot of functionality in here. So you've got a maximum of 16 notes, 16 steps, um, octave range control, uh, different orders up, down. We can change it to alternative up, alternative down, and uh, I think those are the options there. Of course, there's sort order, which is as played, reversed, and I'm just going to bring in a little bit of um, bit of delay. Okay, now let's go back into the arpeggiator and we have something here. We can have velocity modes, first note, last note, or actually as each note. So it'll take the velocity of each key press. And adjust it accordingly. Um, you've got a pattern reset option. You also have, this is where it gets very cool, you can set up accents for the ARP on each step. Negative accents or upper uh, positive accents, as well as glide. Or you can ch change the different steps and direction per step. As well as chords. As well as timing. as well as step length. So, lots of powerful features here in this arpeggiator. Okay, moving on, uh, let's get into the step sequencer and envelopes. So first we'll start with the envelopes here. Decay. Let's 
sustain. Release. Lots of control there. Those are the standard envelopes. You can access also envelope three and four. These can also be looped. Okay, so let's take a look at this sequencer section now. Um, it's a 32 step sequencer and you can control it uh, by putting notes in with the keys. You can also enter rests and things like that. You can also adjust the cutoff values using the knobs um, as well as velocity per step. And there's a lot of functionality in the menu system to go forwards, backwards, things like that. So let's press start. So that's the sequencer in a nutshell. If you really want to get into it, check out the manual. It's very uh, deep and fully featured. Okay. Moving on, uh, let's look at the sort of uh, functions here in this little menu area. One of the things I wanted to touch on was this XForm uh, function, which basically lets you morph between two different um, patches adjacent to each other. So this is just an init patch. So there isn't really much beside it. But if I enable that, I can turn it on. I can control that with a mod wheel. I guess there's a drum patch beside this. So it's morphing into that drum patch. Or you can control it with pressure after touch. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Okay, so that's a great feature to have on this synth. There is also a mod matrix in here where you can set up all types of routings. I'm not gonna do that today, but um, if you really wanna get into you know, deep programming, there is a 16 slot mod matrix available uh, and it does operate at audio rates for a number of routings as well. Uh, lastly, I wanna touch on these four buttons here, which is the uh, instrument section. So this is instrument one, two, three, and four. So you can actually access four part multi-timbrality directly from the front panel. So, you know, this is just our init patch that we've been messing around with, but I can also access a second instrument here, which is just a patch preset. Instrument three, instrument four. Instrument one. Okay, now if I hold these buttons down together, Yeah, awesome to have this functionality here on the front panel. I don't think I've ever seen another synth, especially from back then, um, with that type of capability, uh, directly accessible like this. Maybe I'm wrong. If there's something out there, let me know. But from 1999, to actually enable four parts directly on the interface that easily, it's awesome. There is also this multi timbral mode, which you can access different uh, multi timbral patches. It's been programmed. So, yeah, lots of functionality here. Okay, um, another great feature on here is that there are drum maps. So,
Okay, so that is a high level overview of the synth. Um, I didn't go into every menu and function. Just wanted to give you a quick walkthrough of some of the features here. Let's now take a listen to some of these presets and some of these patches, um, including the single patches and some of the multi timbral modes and things of that nature. And then I'll come back after that and I'll give you my final thoughts.
All right, so hope you guys enjoyed those sounds. They were some of the patches that came with the synth. And at this stage, I'd like to talk about some of the things that I like about the Waldorf Q and some things that I'm not so fond of. And then we'll wrap up with uh, my final thoughts. So, what do I like about the synth? Well, first of all, it is a 16 or 32 voice synthesizer, digital of course, but uh, the ability to have up to 32 voices, if you have the expansion card, really gives you a lot of polyphony to play with and allows for some beautiful uh, pads and long release times for strings and of course other types of soundscapes if you need it. So just great to have that option available. Secondly, of course, this is 16 part multi-timbral. So lots of flexibility there for live performance, especially with the drum maps on board. You can have some drum sounds playing and, and of course some synths on top and splits and layers and whatnot if you need. So lots of fully featured functionality in the multi timbral area. In addition, there is that 16 slot mod matrix. Lots of power there and audio rate modulations that are available, which gives you a lot of flexibility. And there's a ton of sources and destinations you can route things to. Definitely take a look at the Waldorf Q manual if you're interested in the mod matrix. The sort of X form function to morph between two different patches it gives us a unique flair. I recall seeing that functionality on the Yamaha AN1X as well, but um, this is really sort of just upfront and available, uh, very easy to use, and you can control it by the mod wheeler and have to touch, which just gives it a nice extra uh, functionality that most synths don't have. Uh, there's also this four instrument area here for basic multi timbral use in single mode, but the fact that it's you know, available under physical buttons makes it so easy to set up. And uh, that's great. Like It's really quick and easy to get going with just layering four different sounds at one time. I wish more synths had direct access like this for multi timbral uh, usage. As well, the outputs on this synth are pretty high quality. There's actually a lot of outputs on the back, including a spliff output. So if you need up to 48 kilohertz, that's available. And pure digital to digital output, which is great. In addition, of course, there is also this in-depth arpeggiator, which has a ton of functionality, and the sequencer, which is also quite deep. Uh, definitely take a look at, at the manual for more information about that sequencer. Um, the hands-on control, this is definitely a knob-laden synth. There's like 58 knobs here or something like that. So you're not going to be, you know, wondering uh, how do I get to a certain function. It's pretty much knob per function right on the front panel. And if you need to set up some routings and things, that's when you get into the menus. But it's great to have all of this hands-on control just right up front. A um, couple other things here that I really like are the different filter types, the filter routing from serial to parallel, or any point in between. Uh, that's really giving you a lot of flexibility for sound design. There's also this dual effects module, which uh, really gives you a little bit of extra control there um, for your effects per sound, as well as 5.1 delays, which is pretty cool if you have a 5.1 system, and the inclusion of a down sampler effect. I really like that. I love bit crush types of sounds and down sampled sounds, and it's awesome to see this even back in 99 on a synth. Um, so thank you to Waldor for including that functionality. 
And lastly, two other things. Of course, the LFO is going to audio rate. Awesome for FM types of tones, aside from the FM functionality that's on board. But the fact that the LFO is going to audio rate as well really gives you even more flexibility to create those types of tones. And the audio in to route sounds through the synth, as well as a vocoder. Again, just a full sort of feature set in one package, which is awesome. So those are the things I like about the Waldorf Q, but there's also a couple things I'm not so fond of. And that would be the following. The sound, the signal path, the gain staging in this synth can be fairly sensitive depending on oscillator volumes, patch volumes, amplifier volumes, etc., and even effects volumes. There can be distortion introduced at certain points, and you have to be pretty careful with your gain staging. Uh, it's pretty easy at times to overwhelm the, the uh, amp, and you will get distortion, especially things with like reverb. Um, it can be a bit of a detraction depending how you set up your patch. So you have to fiddle with things to get it to the proper levels at times. The sequencer, as I mentioned, is very fully featured, but with that comes some additional complexity. And I personally don't find it the most intuitive sequencer to use. I was referring to the manual a few times, even to get it going. And I didn't really demonstrate it too in depth in this demo here today, but it is very fully featured. I, I just find it as a newcomer, for instance, to a synth like this, it's not exactly the most intuitive to use. That's what I would say about it. Secondly, the paint and um, design of the synth Fantastic hardware, absolutely fantastic build. But in this particular model, and I'm not sure if the future models have this as well, but there's um, a coat of Nextel paint. And it's very prone to easy scratching and it gets rubbed off uh, fairly easily. So you have to be pretty careful with putting this on a rack or a stand and things of that nature. So. Just something to be mindful of with this particular model. Uh, the Nextel paint can come off fairly easily and, and get dinged up pretty quick. Uh, a couple other things here. There are these encoders. A lot of these functions are encoders. But if you don't use this synth for a while, um, you will find that the values start skipping around when you're twisting the encoders. Now it's not the end of the world, you just need to sit there and sort of twist back and forth until it's back you know, the way it should be. But um, because these are endless encoders, they are a bit more prone to that uh, jumpiness if the synth has been left for months or years. Uh, it's just a matter of working them back in to get them where you need it. And related to that, in terms of the knobs themselves, you probably noticed on this particular model, not all of the knobs are the encoders. They used to be, but they're not now. For instance, this cutoff was a red cutoff knob. Um, it's very well known with the Waldorf Q and as well as the Waldorf Microwave XT series. These particular knobs, over time, there's a particular resin or coating that it's using some sort of rubber um, formula. Unfortunately, over time it degrades and the knobs start getting sort of white. Uh, I don't even know what to call this stuff. There's some sort of coating that starts to come off and eventually it starts to crack and crumble in your hands. And so just to give you an example here, I don't know if you can see this, but that's what it looks like. So it's unfortunate, but that's what happens with a lot of these knobs over time. 
and there's not much you can really do with it other than just replace them. There are sets online that are available, uh, but they seem to cost an arm and a leg on eBay and Reverb, uh, but there are other models that can be found for much less uh, if you want to get another set. So that's something that's really sort of annoying that I found after having this synth for a while, that I found some of these knobs just started to crumble in my hands. Something to watch out for on any Q or XT. A uh, couple other last minute things here would be the filter routing. Yes, it's very powerful. I did find when I was routing into parallel mode, you have to set up the different pannings for the different filter types. It's not always evident for what needs to be set to which parameter, and sometimes the sound can be panned completely left or right instead of stereo for parallel filtering. Uh, so that can take a bit of fiddling with. And lastly, I will say that there's a shift mode here. Every one of these functions, or pretty much all of them, have uh, a blue font for the secondary shift mode, which is in blue. So that can be a bit of an annoyance depending on how you look at it. You have to press shift, twiddle the knob, go into the menu, set up your routings, depending what you're trying to do, uh, because there's obviously a lot of functionality. This is a very deep synth, and I guess that's the way they want to tackle that. So it's, it's totally usable, it's just an extra step that uh, you need to be aware of when you're trying to set up certain routings and functions. There is shift functionality on this synth. Okay, so that's what I don't like about the Waldorf Q. But all that said, this is still a very powerful and beautiful sounding synth that uh, is still very sought after today. And if you like classic virtual analog digital synths from the mid to late 90s, then the Waldorf Q is certainly worth considering. It has a distinct sound. It has amazing hands-on control. It has a very high fidelity quality to it. There is a ton of features and functions on the synth. It's probably one of the most feature complete and feature packed virtual analog synths you can buy. So, I have no, um, no problem recommending this synth uh, for those that love virtual analog digital synths. It has a very pristine quality to it, and you're really getting you know, virtual analog modeling. You're getting two wavetables on board for two, at least two oscillators here, which is awesome. You've got FM, you've got filter FM, You've got a vocoder on board, you have a drum map, you have audio in, you have an arpeggiator, you have two effects modules per sound, you have a sequencer, you have patch morphing, um, noise, ring modulation, audio rate LFOs, 16 slot mod matrix, which goes at audio rates, uh, parallel filters, serial filters, multi timbral 16 parts, direct access to four instruments. So, yeah. If you're a fan of the Waldorf sound, and you like the uh, tone of the Waldorf cue, and the various features and functions that are on board.
I don't think you can go wrong here. It's definitely a beautiful sounding synth and there's a lot of possibilities for sound design, that's for sure. So, definitely keep your eyes out. There are obviously a couple of different models. The yellow Waldorf Q, as I have here, is I believe the first uh, series that came out. And then from there, there was the different colored versions. There's the blue ones, there's sort of dark gray, there's a couple other colors out there. And then of course, there's ultimately the Waldorf Q Plus and Phoenix editions, which actually had up to 100 voices and analog filters. Uh, but uh, this is the classic Waldorf Q. And this particular model that I have has 32 voices. So fairly rare to get that and uh, pretty happy with it. So yeah, that's about all I have to say today. I hope you guys enjoyed this review and walkthrough of this lovely sounding and very powerful virtual analog digital sim from Waldorf. The Waldorf Q. Please uh, let me know what you think about the Waldorf Q. Have you owned one? Have you tried one? Let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe, tap the bell, and I will definitely See you guys again soon. Thanks for watching.